Hello everyone, and uh, we are ready for the last contributed talk for um, uh, this session. And we are uh, very pleased to welcome uh, Veronica Koren. Uh, She's a PhD in computational neuroscience at uh, TU Berlin, and uh, she works on behaviorally relevant neural signals, uh, which she studies with spiking neural networks, which is of interest for the aficionados here. And since uh, uh, 2022, she's a postdoc at the Institute for Neural Information Processing with Stefano Panzeri. And uh, we are happy to, uh, to welcome you here. So you have 15 minutes, just five minutes talk with this kind of flexibility that we have here. But uh, and all remember that you have to ask a question if you wish, and they will be answered. Thanks a lot, Veronica. The floor is yours. Thank you very much uh, uh, for the kind introduction. And uh, I would like to thank the participants to uh, show interest into my topic. Uh, that, uh, so this is a project uh, that is a collaboration with Alan Emanuel and supervised by Professor Panzeri. And I'm gonna present some uh, new results and also some um, ideas mainly about uh, how we think about efficient encoding, transmission, and transformation of sensory features in a multi-layer spiking network. Uh, so uh, this work is, uh, stems from a, a pretty a large um, body of uh, theoretical work, uh, mainly in um, uh, starting some years ago uh, by some uh, in uh, insightful observation of the sensory system by Horace Barlow, but uh, it has been also then um, uh, formalized and uh, put into a, like a really uh, interesting mathematical framework. Um, and uh, in recent years, uh, the efficient coding has uh, been also a lot developed in the direction of improvement, improving the interpretability of this framework and improving its biological plausibility. Uh, so, the, with the aim to really capture uh, or try to capture biological networks uh, with uh, this uh, framework. So, um, so far, the work uh, in efficient spiking networks has focused on modeling a single layer of uh, neurons. So, basically, um, a one recurrently connected network mainly. Uh, and, um, a very a natural next step is to uh, extend this and model sensory pathways. So in uh, biological systems, uh, we have that uh, different types of sensory neurons extract uh, different sensory features from an external stimulus. And then they, uh, after they encode, they transmit uh, the signals along an, a sensory pathway. And during this process, uh, these signals might also transform. And we propose to model uh, these functions uh, with a succession of uh, sig signal processing layers. And each of these layers will uh, uh, encode, transmit, and potentially also transform these sensory features. So uh, to give um, a little bit um, more detail, so what is our ascending pathway trying to model is um, sensory neurons that would uh, send, uh, encode some, some features, then you will send this, uh, uh, signals to, let's say, spinal cord, brainstem, thalamus, cortex, and so on. Um, and we will model this as a succession of layers. We start with some external stimulus, and from this external stimulus, different type of sensory neurons will extract different features. Um, so these features will simply be different mechanistic uh, responses of these different types of sensory neurons. And uh, they will drive their, their responses. Uh, sensory neurons will be um, grouped into feedforward spiking networks. Uh, and then they will project forward to uh, recurrently connected spiking networks with excitatory and inhibitory neurons. And uh, we also incorporate this observation from biology that we have excitatory neurons in a previous layer that will project to both excitatory and inhibitory neurons in the next layer. So to give a bit uh, more concrete idea, what do we mean by stimulus features? Um, we take here an example from the somatosensory system. Um, so in the skin um, of many animals, like also humans or mice, 
we can find up to 10 types of sensory neuron types and each type responds to a specific feature of uh, the stimulus. Uh, so in, uh, for example, if we apply a light pressure on the skin, this type of stimulus uh, is responsible for the perception of fine touch and it uh, mainly elicits a response of two types of sensory neurons uh, that we call slowly adapting and rapidly adapting low threshold mechanoreceptors. So these neurons have been well documented in uh, empirical studies. And what has been understood is that um, the slowly adapting uh, neurons, they respond to the change in the, sorry, to the intensity of the force applied to the skin. And uh, the rapidly adapting neurons, they respond to the change in the intensity. So this is the, will then be the two features of the same stimulus that uh, we will uh, take as an example to encode and propagate along our pathway. Uh, so uh, we do efficient coding and so to, uh, to implement it, we pose a loss function for every processing layer. Uh, so in layer zero, uh, which is the layer where these sensory neurons or receptors um, work, uh, we will uh, do efficient coding with single neurons. Um, and the last function would be uh, relative to the activity of each single neuron of a specific type M. And other than that, uh, our last function looks uh, very uh, familiar to people who know efficient coding. So we have some, um, we have some um, estimation of the encoding error and then uh, of the metabolic cost of this neuron. And this is weighted by constant. In a generic uh, recurrently connected layer, uh, so yeah, as I already said, we will do it efficient coding with a recurrently connected spiking network. And uh, so we will write a loss function, uh, not for a single neuron, but for an entire population of neurons. So this could be excitatory or inhibitory neurons. And uh, yeah, their loss function, um, other than that, will be quite similar to what we already had before. So we will have some encoding error and some metabolic cost on spiking and weighted uh, simply by a constant. Since now in this uh, recurrently connected networks, we want to encode several uh, stimuli at the same time, we will uh, need uh, our, uh, our signals to be expressed as vectors. Um, so yeah, a uh, couple of more equations. I hope not everybody runs away, but um, so in the, what are the target signals uh, across layers? Uh, so in the layer zero, we simply uh, assume that our target signal is just a leak integration of the sensory feature that this particular uh, neuron type uh, encodes. Uh, then in the recurrently connected layer N, uh, we will have um, a target signal that is a vector and uh, it's a slightly more complicated, but it's actually uh, still quite similar in, 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 in um, in spirit to what we had before. So we will say that the target signal in layer N depends on population readout uh, from the excitatory neurons of the previous layer, N minus one. And we will also allow um, a linear transformation of, uh, of this uh, target sig uh, of this signal here uh, through this matrix A, and then uh, put a non-linearity around it. And also because we are going to use this later, um, I'm going to here also define the population readout in this uh, layer N. And this is simply defined as a vector of low pass filtered spikes and weighted by the some matrix that weights uh, the spiking activity of each neuron relative to each feature that is encoded. So now uh, if we do uh, some math, uh, it's uh, what, we, what we recover is actually um, generalized leaky integrated fire neurons uh, that can solve our op optimization problems. So in layer zero, uh, we recover uh, this membrane equation where we can see we have a leak current, a feed forward current, some spike triggered adaptation and noise. And in a, in a recurrent uh, layer for the population of uh, excitatory or inhibitor neurons, we also recover a similar uh, type of membrane equation, but in addition, we also have recurrent excitatory and inhibitory uh, synaptic connections. 
So uh, this is uh, this is something that uh, we find good because uh, leaky integrated fire uh, neurons are um, well, uh, are known to be good in also reproducing cortical activity. Uh, so now uh, something that I would also uh, like to further specify is our fit forward currents uh, because those are new results. Uh, so in the first I'm gonna. I'll tell about the feed forward current from layer zero to layer one. Uh, so here, what we were able to recover is um, a mechanistic expression for such a current where uh, the feed forward current to a particular neuron uh, I will be depending on the um, uh, converging synaptic input from presynaptic neurons uh, and weighted uh, by the for feed forward connectivity matrix. Uh, so, following empirical studies, we uh, we um, implement the convergence within type. This means that different types of sensory neurons they all project to the same postsynaptic neurons, and also across type. So um, this means that uh, yeah, the, the neurons of the, the different neurons of the same type also project. Many of them project on the same postsynaptic neuron. So. Now, uh, yeah, when we uh, have our expression for this feedforward current, uh, we can simulate the model. And uh, because we have a normative approach, it's relatively um, straightforward to measure the performance of our model. And that's what we do. So uh, we ask um, how does the performance of our model depend on the within type convergence and across type convergence of sensory receptor neurons. What we find is that uh, within type convergence uh, lowers the encoding error of our feed forward spiking networks, while the across type convergence will be actually increasing slightly the error, but it will be uh, decreasing the cost, uh, the metabolic cost of this transmission. And we think this is uh, the reason why uh, this convergence is uh, actually uh, there in biological brains. So uh, forward, um, so we go to the, describe the fit forward connectivity between two recurrently connected networks. So as we would expect from a mechanistic um, model, we, we um, find that this um, fit forward current depends on the low pass filtered spikes from the previous layer and is weighted again by the fit forward matrix. Um, and uh, this fit forward matrix will depend on uh, a couple of things. One is the, the decoding weights of presynaptic neurons, then decoding weights of postsynaptic neurons, and also on this matrix A, uh, which can uh, allow us to transform uh, the signals. And um, yeah, to look on some, uh, Sorry, so this completes our model. And so now uh, we have uh, all defined all the connections and all the across the model. So um, our analytical approach uh, defines the membrane equations and uh, complete um, models. However, it does not uh, determine the parameters of the model. Um, we do, however, have um, um, find, we found a good way to determine them by uh, simply uh, simulating our equations and looking for parameter settings that uh, optimize the average uh, loss of, um, of our networks. We can do this in layer zero and as well as in every recurrently connected layer. So here I'm showing the simulation of the two types of uh, sensory neurons in response to a time-dependent stimulus. So those are slowly adapting uh, mechanoreceptors uh, and those are rapidly adapting mechanoreceptors. So you can see that uh, both types of neurons, uh, they are um, estimating their target very accurately, uh, even though their, uh, yeah, their uh, spiking pattern is very different. So uh, further, I uh, am testing the uh, tra uh, transmission of the signal across multiple layers, including the recurrently connected layers. Um, and I am here imposing the no transformation of the signal. So basically the network is just transmitting the identical copies of the signal across layers. 
Um, and uh, this works uh, pretty well. So this is the activity in a single trial in AMB. And we can see the population readout uh, across layers for the two features that are encoded by this network. And we can see that the, um, the uh, encoding of these features is very reliable. Um, further on, we see a uh, realistic spiking activity uh, that is uh, yeah, uh, produced by this network. And now uh, we may ask if the structured feed forward connectivity that I have uh, that we have recovered from equations uh, is this really necessary for efficient transmission of our signals? So to do so, um, I have uh, shuffled the connectivity within uh, a connectivity matrix. And so uh, and so therefore, I, instead of having structured connectivity, I introduce a random connectivity. So when we do this for connections between excitatory to excitatory neurons, we see a very uh, big increase both in the error and cost of uh, the transmission. Uh, and if we um, unstructure the excitatory to inhibitory fit forward connections, we don't see so uh, big increase in error, but we do see a quite a big increase in the metabolic cost. So uh, we conclude that the structured feed forward connectivity is really important for efficient transmission. And um, lastly, we would like to, uh, we wanted to also uh, implement something uh, more interesting, which is to not only um, transmit the indebt identical copies of the signal, but also to... Um, Veronica, to, like, three, yeah. three minutes before the end. Yeah. Thank you. So to also transform uh, these signals um, and to do some more interesting uh, neural computation with them. So to do that is uh, really uh, simple. Actually, we need to just uh, change this uh, transformation matrix here. Uh, and uh, yeah, by manipulating off diagonal, off diagonal elements of this matrix, we can implement, uh, for example, nonlinear mixing of stimulus features. Uh, so we can implement um, a positive interaction across features or a negative interaction. So here I made an example where uh, the network is responding to a step stimulus to better, uh, to better demonstrate how these uh, representations are formed. And so here, um, well, just for a comparison, there is no uh, interaction across features. And so there's two features that are um, tracked and estimated by the network. Now, when we introduce the positive interaction, what we what we do is to make these two features more similar to each other over time. So if we measure the correlation across the two features, we see a strong increase in correlations. And when uh, we in introduce a negative interaction, what we see is a strong decrease in correlation or anti-correlation. Um, and we see this contrast computation where basically um, the, when one feature goes down, the other goes up and the other way around. So the network is computing a temporal contrast across the two features. So yeah, with this, uh, I'm gonna wrap up. So here we, um, we built a multi-layer spiking network. We used uh, efficient coding theory and biological constraints. Um, what is uh, really new is that we can express with forward connectivity uh, that can implement a variety of operations, including mixing of sensory features. We achieve good performance. Uh, the model can transmit also correlated stimulus features that are uh, evolved on different timescales. And we also improve in biological possibility with respect to similar models. So yeah, the model also cap has a couple of limitations, but we, uh, yeah, none of them is seems to be too drastic. And basically with work in progress, we hope to also maybe include some of them in the further um, developments. So with this, I'm happy to take the questions and thank you for your attention. Great, Thank thanks a lot, uh, Veronica. Uh, we I have a question from uh, Bill uh, Podlaski. Uh, what is the biophysical interpretation of your nonlinearity G, the, the scalar function that you use in your generalized? Uh, yeah, uh, that's a great question. So this is uh, really, um, really fresh and still work in progress. Uh, but for example, um, I have implemented uh, a, um, 
uh, rectified linear function as uh, so I, I used a uh, rectified linear function for for the G in the example that I have shown so here um, we we can also skip the nonlinearity uh, if we feel like it's not uh, it's not um, biologically plausible so yeah we are a bit unclear yet um, if we uh, need a nonlinearity or if it's enough to basically have um, a linear transformation that is just done by the matrix A. So um, yeah, totally uh, open question uh, on how, uh, yeah, if we really need that. But uh, one thing I can say is that um, um, we are still debating if this, um, if this uh, weights that we have here should be on the positive or they could also be negative. Um, because if we have negative weights, we are typically better in tracking the negative uh, fluctuations. Um, but then we want this um, feedforward connectivity to be always excitatory to respect Dale's law, because the con connections come from excitatory neurons. And in this case, potentially nonlinearity could help us to just only have uh, excitatory synapses uh, in the that, that, that are therefore. Um, uh, conform with Dale's law. So that could be a potentially a utility of, of having non-linearity so, here. So we have a, an, um, uh, a last question. It gets emotional. Yeah. It's the last question of SNUFA 2024. Uh, uh, a question from Rainer Engelken. Uh, thank you for the talk. Can you elaborate more on the ability to perform non-linear computation across layers in your model? So now, how can it perform nonlinear? Um, yeah, we, we so as I said, this everything is very fresh. We did not uh, explore too much uh, what does this nonlinearity do or what can it do. Uh, so as I said, uh, we can. Um, I I think what is relevant is to implement a, a rectified linear function here, potentially other functions, but uh, yeah, really we have not. Um, so much into this direction yet. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, Veronica. It was great. Thank you. Uh, here. And, and now we have uh, we will have some closing remarks. So do we we stay in that room? I guess maybe. Okay, Dan is joining. Yep. 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 Uh, and I think everyone should join as well. We invited uh, uh, Malika. Yes, this was great. Thanks so much. Um, thanks so much to all the speakers again. Um, one more time. And uh, thanks so much to Laurent and Melika for um, helping us select all the, the abstracts and the talks and the organization, also sharing the sessions. And also, um, I would like to say thanks a lot again to our uh, hosts yesterday or the chairs yesterday, Yulia and uh, Daniel. And uh, for me, this was absolutely fantastic, great fun. Um, and we certainly would like to do it again. What do you think, Dan? I think we can, uh, I think we can, we can just about stretch to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we would love to do it again. Uh, it was, a, it was a great success, I think. Um, Today a little quieter than yesterday. Possibly everyone, uh, all the all Americans, licking their wounds a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, yesterday we we were getting really pretty big audiences. Today also really quite decent audiences. Um, successful poster session. I think it it went really nicely. Um, and uh, a really great selection of talks. Uh, some some stuff that I'm really looking forward to reading the preprints of and stuff like that. Um, one thing I think it would be interesting is if anyone has suggestions for how we can do things differently or things, ideas you'd like us to try out or anything really, or suggestions of who we should invite to talk, please just get in contact. Um, just send, uh, send us an email or yeah, uh, anything really. Um, yeah, let us know or, or, or mention it now if you want. Um, we've got the chat open, so if anyone has ideas, we can we can we can see it. Um, yeah. Otherwise, Friedman. Brilliant. That's it. That's uh, as Laurent Le said. It's a little bit emotional. Thanks so much, Dan. It's always always a pleasure working with you on this. Uh, you did so much again with all the the backend stuff, and yeah, I'm looking forward to next year.
Uh, I still love spiking neural networks, and every time uh, I go to Snoofer, it's confirmed. It's really great what you're all doing. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Oh, and uh, I'll be uploading all of the videos, assuming all of the speakers uh, consent to uh, to having that um, within the next couple of days. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks. And Thanks. hopefully see you all next year. See you next year.